I got all the satisfaction in the world once I knew that I could do it. You know? Did you start lifting to maybe build yourself up to be able to confront your dad or anything like that, or is it totally separate? Uh, I, absolutely. Um, I started doing everything. I joined the Army as soon as I could. Uh, 17, I had to wait before I started basic training at 18, when I joined at 17. And as soon as I got in there, I started uh, my martial arts lessons. I started lifting weights. I started. Did you ever doing... see like him throwing a kick and stuff? <laughs> no, I haven't. I, I, I it's wanted wild. to. Uh, it's wild. Yeah, I wanted to destroy my dad. I wanted to be, become so proficient in martial arts and fighting that I could whoop his ass easy because I wanted to talk to him when I whoop his ass like he used to talk to me when he was whooping my ass. You, know? yeah. you better not cry. I want to tell him the same fucking. You better not cry, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> you know? so I wanted to get that good at it. So that's uh, yeah, that had a. A big driving force on me. I mean, I was uh, practicing every day, you know, four or five. I go to work, uh, still come home and practice four or five, and just punching and kicking and all my different routines, sparring and stuff. And I wanted to whoop pops' ass, and he did not cry. <laughs> yeah. When you gained that discipline, did you utilize it against him, or did you just, you probably felt differently once you knew how to defend yourself? Once uh, I got all the satisfaction in the world, once I knew that I could do it, that was enough. Once I knew that I could do it, and he knew that I could do it, then I was completely fine. You know, after that. I, didn't, I didn't have to actually do it, as long as he knew. You know, uh, When I was able to tell my dad, you know what? I ain't scared of you. Oh, man, it was like uh, 10,000 pounds was lifted off my shoulders. The bit is looking at the big bad wolf, and it's like Little Red Robin telling the big bad wolf, I ain't scared of you. What you want to do, you know? <laughs> no problem. Whatever you want to do, it's cool with me, wolf. You know, so uh, that that relieved all of that tension once I was able to do that. Power Project family, what if I told you that you could eat cereal that doesn't mess with your diet, that doesn't have massive amounts of sugar, that doesn't give you the bubble guts, and that's actually really good for you? Well, that's why we partner with the Magic Spoon. Zero grams of sugar, four grams of net carbs, 14 grams of protein, and 140 calories per serving. And it actually tastes like kid cereal. <laughs> God dang it. Andrew, how could people get it? Absolutely. You guys got to head over to magicspoon.com slash power project, and that'll get you $5 off the variety pack. Um, links to them down in the description. Let's get back to this video. I'm just curious, like, what spurred for you the the understanding that you had to be the one to forgive him and number one and number two like how you found the idea that you didn't necessarily need the closure of hearing those words from him because i mean he's still alive right no no he's not alive yeah he so, passed away yeah mm -hmm. um he passed away and i, I you know never got those, those uh, uh yeah yeah he passed Pretty. away within the last five years or so, mm -hmm. right? yes okay. uh -huh. yeah about two years ago and i no, three years ago because I couldn't go to his funeral because I was having a heart transplant. So three years ago, that's why I couldn't make it possible. I would have went, but I couldn't go because uh, they said if I, I left, then I would have to start all over back on the transplant list to get, go back to the bottom. Of the, I'm like, no, I, you know, I, I kind of want to stay around for a little while longer if I can. So I'll go ahead and stay. Here. You got to forgive me, Pops. So I'm not going to be able to make it to your funeral. So I didn't make it to Pops' funeral, but. Uh, I knew that, you know, last, last time I talked to him, uh, that I was not going to get that apology. That was, I, you know, I had hopes and dreams. And, and then if Pops would just say, I'm sorry, all them years of me hiding in the closet when I heard his keys jingling in the door, you know, wanting to disappear. I wanted to just physically disappear, vanish. And when I knew my dad was coming, I'm like, oh, my God, I wish I could just vanish. And I, I wanted to be the Invisible Man big time. That was a series come up. And uh, I knew that I was never going to get out. So he's 86. It's my last opportunity to talk to him. I wanted to finally hold a conversation with him. And as long as this conversation was, look, Dad, I'm apologizing to you because I think you know, you're probably going to outlive me. At that point, I thought he was going to outlive me. So I'm like, you know, I don't want to leave this earth 
uh, with feeling like this or holding this against you. So I have to get this off me. You're obviously never going to say it's hurt me. I didn't tell him that, but I'm saying, I just want to apologize for holding this in my heart against you for all these years. And, you know, he uh, actually, he didn't say, well, it were. He just nodded his head. So I took that as him ex accepting my apology. So he nodded his head. I gave him a kiss on the forehead. And that was the last time I seen my dad. Do you have uh, any resentment, like, towards, this kind of might sound like a weird question, but do you have any resentment towards uh, the fact that he still sort of made you into Compton Superman? <laughs> like, you wouldn't have been Compton Superman without him, probably. So Absolutely. It's like, it's a fucked up way of, sorry, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> the messed up way of looking at it, but, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I used to, you know, resent it a whole lot, but... If it wasn't for Buddy Fletcher, Corporal Buddy Fletcher, United States Army, you know, I would definitely would not be uh, the person I am today. Because I, when I went into the Army, I was ready for the Army. I was already used to saluting and standing at attention and saying, yes, sir, no, sir, because that's what we had to do. My dad was, uh, he was a soldier uh, until he left this earth. Um, we talk about mental, I was talking to your dad a little bit about a bit about uh, mental aspects and the, the depression and stuff. But my dad was, they used to call it back then, Mr. Bell, shell shot. Um, and they call it PTSD now. But the term back then was shell shot. And my dad went into the Army when he was 16 years old. He had a guy named Arthur Levin. I'll never forget this. He didn't talk about it much, but Arthur Levin signed the papers so he could go into the Army at 16. So he went in the Korean War at 16 years old. So if you can imagine what you were doing at 16, and this guy's in the Korean War, dead bodies, all the people blown apart, people that he went through basic training with, blown to pieces at 16 years old, it's going to leave you a little nutty. Uh, oh, excuse me, that's not, I know that's not uh, PC to say yeah, nutty, but you're going to be a, have a mental problem. So he had a... a, a a mental problem. And, you know, they didn't talk much about it. I, I, I had to find out this from relatives that knew that, you know. And it's, not, it's not interesting to think, to reflect on that because, I mean, not to make excuses for him, but maybe he did suffer from severe depression. Maybe he had a bunch of concussions. Like maybe he, like you said, saw horrific things, wasn't able to, you know, really turn the corner and live. Maybe there was, you know, if there's a time period in his life where he wasn't maybe violent, like, was he, I don't know if you've heard that from your you mom, mean besides your at mom home? or something. <laughs> yeah. Besides at home? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, he was a, uh, a very violent person. And his mother, he, his mother um, killed her husband. <laughs> so he comes, you know, so you imagine how his home life had to be for him to choose, to voluntarily choose to go into war to get away from home. How bad home had to be for him to volunteer. Now, you don't, you know, like, you don't go in. I went, it was peacetime when I went in the service. He went in knowing that it was a full-blown, the Korean War was a full-blown Korean War. He went in knowing that to get away from home. So home had to be pretty bad. And he always told me, you know, as bad as you think you got it, I had it a lot worse. And I'm like, okay, I'm sitting, there, I'm sitting in the ER going, okay. <laughs> but yeah, he told me he had a lot worse than I did. That makes me wonder, to be honest, like a lot of people have different types of traumas that they have to deal with. Traumas potentially from their parents, relatives, et cetera, right? And as you get older, you start to realize that maybe there's some things that you do that are reminiscent of those individuals. Some people take one of two routes. Some people are like, I do this because my mother or father did this to me, so now I do it too. And some people are like, I choose not to do this because they did it to me. Absolutely. You obviously chose not to do that as it was, or because it was done to you. What, was it the military that, that, was, that did that for you? Was it seeing your mother? Like, what was it that made you make that choice? Because a lot of people, they blame, right, those people for their traumas, and that doesn't allow them to ever get out of it. You know, you're absolutely right. And what did it for me was um, how I felt 
uh, I didn't want my kids to feel the same way about me that I felt about my dad. That's what, that's what, when I, when I had children, I said, I don't want my kids to be waking up in their fifties and forties, punching and kicking and screaming and thinking about what I want them to look back on their childhood and have good, happy memories. I, I, there was a, we shot a movie called uh, Magnificent Obsession. And there was a scene in there where me and my dad, <laughs> they asked my dad, can you remember any happy memories, uh, childhood memories of you and CT? And man, I and see my, I was waiting on this one, man. I'm like, I don't want to hear this. I mean, I want to know, you know, if he can think of one, because I can't. I want to know if he can think of one happy memory. And I was, okay, well, what are you going to, and he didn't have one. And I was like, okay, that's cool. That's cool. If he had made up something, then I'd have been pissed off. <laughs> but, you know, he didn't, you know, he didn't have an answer for him. And I, 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 people don't know, but that was a big scene uh, for me, because I was like, I'm waiting to hear this. What, I mean, you know, I remember that time I took him to get ice cream. I remember that time we went to the park and threw ball back and forth. I remember that time, you know, we played football. I was waiting on to hear something like that. And, you know, he was, it was cricket. So, okay, Pops, at least you keep it real. As long as you keep it real, we cool. Because I would have blasted him out right on the booth. I was like, bullshit. No. Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> I'm like, no, that didn't happen. Uh, Samson, do you think that uh, dad was sometimes uh, too kind? Uh, when you were growing up, like maybe, uh, maybe, maybe because of some of the things he experienced, maybe uh, he had like less rules for you or something like that. Uh, that's a really good question too. Um, and the simplest way to answer that is just he was just a great dad. You know what I mean? So the rules I was always raised with respect. You know, um, my dad always taught me to say thank you for everything. Right. And um, I was often told that I say it too much. <laughs> and, you know, I apologize. Yeah. That's, you know, that's just me. And uh, my mom, you know, obviously her being Pacific Islander, she's all right. about respect too. Yeah, I think uh, your dad, when I've asked him a question like that when you weren't here, mm -hmm. um, he said uh, something to the effect of, uh, I'd rather give my kids an ice cream cone than a punch in the face, you know, and if the ice cream cone, you know, leads to them being uh, maybe coddled or something. Like, I'll maybe have to deal with that at some other time. But I thought that was a good answer. 